Hi friends, welcome back to another pick a card reading. Today's money pick a card reading is all about answering the question, what financial miracles are you manifesting? This is a general reading, take what resonates and leave what doesn't. These readings are always meant to empower you. As always, trust your own intuition first with any reading that you watch. You know what is ultimately best for you and you always have free will and choice, so remember that. If you would like to check out my podcast or my online shop, check out the links in the description. But if you are new to pick a card readings, here's how it works. The first thing that you're going to do is you are going to pick the pile or the crystal that you are the most intuitively drawn to. So we have pile one here with the double terminated citrine. We have pile two here with the smoky quartz Merkaba. We have pile three here with the blue lace agate crystal. And then we also have pile four here with the sea foam calcite crystal. So you can choose one pile, you can choose more than one pile, or you can choose all of them. It is totally up to you, but when you have selected your pile or your piles, you can go to the description of this video and find the timestamp that is linked to your pile so you can skip ahead to your reading all about what financial miracles you're manifesting. Thank you so much for letting me read for you, and I will see you on the other side. Hi, pile one. Welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. Okay, so pile one, the first card that you have here is the six of wands. You have the fertile void. This one says inner rest. Oh, inner winter, rest, patience, potency, secret beginnings. You also have the beaver and birch. This one says home. You have the masquerade. This one says hiding your true self, projection. Then you also have Evolution. This one says Virgo Wisdom. Then you have a Crystal card, and this one is Lapidolite. You also have Faith. A Super Attractor Affirmation card. This one says, when I'm connected to spirit, I feel a sense of certainty, magnitude, and ease that I've never known before. Pile one. Let's start off with the Six of Wands here. With the Six of Wands here, um, the financial miracles that you're about to manifest probably include things like victory and recognition and success. Um, Pile one, I feel like you're going to be rewarded for your hard work and your efforts. So with this card, it can talk about things like public recognition and rewards. So maybe some of you here are going to be receiving some sort of acknowledgement or praise for your financial achievements. Um, Maybe this is going to lead you to promotions or bonuses or some sort of increased income. I also feel like maybe this could point to like successful investments, right? Whether this is like, you know, in business or education or financial ventures, I feel like this is the card of like things paying off, right? Things bringing you tangible returns and like financial growth. Um, I also feel like maybe there's this element of like confidence and momentum, right? This card, this card is one that encourages us to keep riding the wave of success and continue to make bold, um, informed decisions, right? I think that with the six of wands, this could point to maybe you receiving some sort of recognition or support from others, right? Other people are noticing your success. And I think that they're more likely to support you, whether this is through networking or partnerships or collaborations, right? Um, Overall, with the Six of Wands, I feel like you're just going to get some sort of reward or recognition or some sort of success that you reach that's going to boost your financial standing and attract more opportunities for your growth. Now, we also have the Fertile Void here. This one says Inner Rest, sorry, Inner Winter, Rest, Patience, Potency, and Secret Beginnings. So with this card, I feel like the financial miracles that you're manifesting are currently in a period of like quiet growth and maybe like unseen development in some way. Um, Because, you know, just like in nature where winter is a time of things being dormant, I think that like maybe 
right now if you're not seeing some sort of like result just know that there's some sort of like significant transformation that's taking place beneath the surface right so i think there's the element of like rest and patience here like right now it's really crucial to trust the process and to allow things to unfold naturally i feel like your financial abundance is being cultivated but it does require some sort of like patience and rest and like going within as well right so maybe this is a sign for you to also like once you've done the work that you need to do take a step back and really allow sort of like maybe like ideas and plans and opportunities to mature in their own time and there's definitely this big theme of like potency and secret beginnings right so maybe like although you feel like nothing is happening right now this is really a powerful time of potential, right? So just like seeds are underground during winter, I feel like your financial goals are in like the state of preparation. So I think that what you're manifesting now is going to come out in the end a lot stronger, um, a lot more powerful, and it's going to come in divine timing is like what I feel with this card. Um, I feel like this could also point to like hidden miracles, right? So maybe like money or financial miracles quietly getting themselves in line to be in your favor, right? So trust that what's happening behind the scenes is setting the stage for future abundance. And I do think that your intuition and your patience will guide you towards these opportunities when the timing is perfect. Now, overall, I think that this card suggests that financial blessings are on their way, but maybe you're in this phase of like incubation, right? Maybe this phase of like rest and quiet growth. So this card really reminds us to trust the process and know that sometimes the most significant transformations happen in silence. We also have the beaver and birch. This one says home. So the financial miracles that you're manifesting are probably centered around stability, maybe like building foundations or creating a secure environment for yourself and your loved ones. I do feel like your manifestations are probably strongly linked to home related things, whether this is like investing in property or improving your space or maybe even like nurturing the sense of like security and comfort. I just feel like the beaver, it symbolizes things like hard work and resourcefulness and the ability to construct something very long and lasting. So I think that with the beaver and the birch, this could represent things like new beginnings, maybe growth. And I think that maybe this these financial opportunities that are coming your way will support the creation of like a stable and nurturing home right so maybe for some of you here the financial miracle or the blessing that's coming your way is buying or renovating a home right like maybe you're manifesting the financial means to be able to invest in real estate or make some improvements in your home or maybe to create a living space that really feels safe and aligned with your desires i also feel like there's this element of you securing some sort of long-term financial stability. And yeah, I just think that your home and family life is going to benefit from whatever financial miracle is coming your way. We also have the masquerade. This one says hiding your true self and projection. So with this, I feel like maybe the financial miracles that you're manifesting could be tied to revealing or embracing your authentic self. I think that, you know, it can be easy for us to like want to, protect ourselves or like hide behind um, a mask, right? But I feel like with this, it could block like the flow of abundance and really prevent us from actually fully attracting the financial blessings that we deserve. So maybe the financial miracles that are coming your way will require you to peel back the layers in some way, right? Like I'm like seeing an onion being like peeled back, right? There's layers to it. Um, and I don't know if this is like protection that's built um, for protection, right? Or to fit certain societal expectations. But this card reminds us that by aligning with our true identity and when we remember to stay authentic, we can really create more space for miracles and opportunities that really resonate with who we truly are rather than the image that we project. I also feel like with this card, I just feel like you're going to be moving towards authenticity. I think clearing any sort of blocks and really attracting the wealth that aligns with your inner self is what I'm feeling. I also feel like you are creating or painting the masterpiece that you want to see in your life, right? So maybe like this is you being very active in the co-creation process and 
kind of like finally showing the world who you are because you've always been this person deep down inside, right? Peeling back the layers and allowing your authentic self to shine. Now, we also have evolution. This one says Virgo wisdom. A seed pod catches the wind. A seed pod uses the wind to travel further afield and increase its chances of finding fertile ground. Evolution can be practical. Minor changes can add up. What small useful habits can you put in place? Interesting. It reminds me of what we spoke about with the beaver. One by one, right? Laying the foundation for a stable home, for stable financial opportunity, sorry, for stable finances, right? I feel like maybe your financial growth is deeply connected to the process of self-improvement, right? Maybe like methodical planning or maybe this sense of practicality. The sign of Virgo is very much a master at being an attention to detail, having analytical thinking and having this very strong work ethic. So I feel like the financial miracles that you're attracting are probably going to come from your ability to apply any sort of wisdom that you've learned through experience and through refining your skills and through making like well-informed decisions. Um, and just as Virgo energy values very steady progress, I feel like your financial miracles will probably unfold gradually through that consistent effort, consistent effort, right? And through that discipline practice. Um, I also feel like your financial decisions are probably going to be guided by practical knowledge and probably this strong sense of discernment. I feel like you're attracting opportunities that really do align with your long-term goals and your values. Virgo, it's also connected to health and wellness, so I feel like there could be financial opportunities that are related to these these areas, whether this is um, through investments or careers or businesses that do promote well-being. Um, I also feel like maybe for some of you, the theme of service oriented success is coming through. Like Virgo um, is all about being of service to other people. So maybe these miracles that are coming to you come through your acts of service or through you improving the lives of other people in some way, right? Maybe it's on focusing on helping and healing others. I also feel like this is my pile that has really good attention to detail. I feel like this meticulous nature of yours and this attention to detail will help you draw in more financial success, right? I feel like these opportunities are ones that do require precision and analysis and careful management. So yes, we also have the Lapidolite crystal card. Um, with this card, let's read what's on the back. It says Lapidolite, what, what it is. Lapidolite is a lithium infused mica with rose and lavender with rose and lavender hued spa vibes. Who needs it? The perpetually frazzled, the oh so cerebral type A workaholics. Where to put it? In a bubble bath, on a meditation cushion, in the fetal position, where the pressure to be successful, fit, and fabulous 24-7, 365 is too much. When to use it, when freaking out, or to prevent that. Put the phone on, do not disturb, hold the pedalite at each palm, and just let yourself be for five minutes. Relax the muscles between your shoulder blades, lengthen your breaths, and let go of all the drama it wasn't yours to begin with anyway. Enter your chill zone. Interesting. I think there's a lot of success on the horizon for you, pal one, and with this, I think it's important to keep our energy grounded. It's important to, you know, focus on staying calm, reducing stress, reducing anxiety. So for any of you out there who have been worried or stressed or very anxious, maybe Lapidolite could be a good stone for you to work with. Um, if you guys are interested in getting your hands on any sort of crystals that you see here today, I do have a online shop with crystals, spiritual items, self-care items, and jewelry, of course. So check that out in the description if you're interested. But um, I just wanted to show you a real piece of Lapidolite and um, anytime I am super duper stressed or want to meditate and ground my energy I'm always reaching for Lapidolite because it is so wonderful and I'm trying to get a closer view because it actually has like really pretty like sparkles in it too let's see there we go like little sparkly glitters in it but yeah this is a piece of Lapidolite so I'm also thinking that 
remember or remember how we were talking about um maybe your financial miracles will come through you helping others or being of service to others maybe you're going to help others reduce stress or help others reduce their anxiety or manage it right that could be a thing we also have the faith card here with this one um i feel like this is your sign to trust trust that good things are coming your way i feel like this is my pile that could feel good things are coming their way or feel that stability is on the horizon so this is just an extra reminder to trust to have faith in the universe but ultimately to have faith in yourself trust in your ability to be do accomplish have achieve whatever it is that you want in this lifetime because you can right now we also have the super attractor affirmation card this one says when i'm connected to a spirit oh, when i'm connected to spirit i feel a sense of certainty magnitude and ease that i've never known before i like that i feel like when you put faith in the universe that's when you can bring in that sense of certainty right and that's when ease flows in that's when things come to us um a lot more smoother and without uh, so much turbulence right when we're when we have less resistance in the way things flow to us easier right so i feel like this is my pile that's like you need to know that good things are coming your way regardless and maybe by having faith and by easing up by kind of releasing your grip a bit that things will flow in a little bit smoothly a little bit more smoothly right so yes um let's let's pull some or let's roll some astro dice get more information what financial miracles is pile one manifesting okay you have the sun in gemini in the seventh house so sun in gemini in the seventh house so with the sun in gemini in the seventh house i feel like you're manifesting financial miracles through partnerships or communication or social connections the seventh house talks about things like relationships, our alliances, and collaborations, and Gemini is all about communication, quick thinking, and adaptability. Um, now, if you are interested in learning more about um, the different houses in astrology, the different signs, the different planets, or learning how to understand and read your birth chart in a very simple way, I have a podcast called the That's Deep Podcast, a spiritual and personal development podcast. I have that linked for you in the description if you feel called. But in terms of the financial miracles that you might be manifesting with this, the first thing I think is very lucrative partnerships. So I think that you're likely going to attract or really solidify partnerships that could bring you financial gain, right? So whether this is in business or joint ventures or collaborative or collaborative projects, I feel like this is something that's going to multiply your income streams. Now, I do feel like you're going to be negotiating in some way. So I do think that you're going to have like favorable deals and contracts and agreements that really enhance your finances because of your ability to negotiate really well. I also think this is a sign to work on your network opportunities, right? Connect with others, build a network, because this is what's going to open doors, right? To new financial opportunities. Maybe this is going to give you more referrals. Maybe this is going to give you um, new clients or maybe some sort of like investment prospect, right? I also feel like this is a sign to stay flexible, stay adaptable, right? In any sort of money or financial strategies that you like take on, right? So maybe you discover new ways to diversify your income or to manage your finances through innovative things, right? And I think that this is something that's going to make you more financially resilient. I also feel like the sun in the seventh house, maybe it can bring more public attention or recognition. And I feel like this is something that could lead you to increase revenue, especially if your work involves public speaking or the media or social platforms. So overall, I think with the sun in Gemini in the seventh house, you're going to be manifesting financial miracles through your connections and communication skills and your ability to adapt to changing circumstances as it has to do with your relationships and your partnerships. So 
yes 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 thank you so much pile one please give this video a like if it resonates it really does help the channel please comment below with what pile you chose because you know i love the chat with you all in the comments subscribe if you haven't already take care of yourself and make sure you check out my channel titled tarot i have a playlist of pick a cards from a bunch of different topics love career money manifestation personal development all of the things so thank you thank you i will see you on the next video by pile one. Hi pile two, welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. Okay, so the first card that you have here, you have the Hierophant here. You also have the Sacred Union. This one says Beloved Within, Inner and Outer Relationships. We also have the Bear and Cedar Leadership. You have the Herald. This one says Small Regrets, Longing. You also have Beginnings. This one says Aries, Spirit. You have a Crystal card here. This one is Aragonite. And then you also have Outrageous Openness. And then you also have When I'm in a state of appreciation, I'm in vibrational alignment with my true nature. With the Hierophant here, I feel like the financial miracles and the abundance that you are going to manifest may come through traditional paths or structure or some sort of wise guidance. This card represents established systems, institutions, and even having spiritual knowledge. I feel like this is my pile that is going to accumulate their wealth through more disciplined methods, right? I think that this is when you follow well-tested principles and maybe even potentially seek out like mentorship or some sort of advice from an expert in your field. Um, maybe some of you here also manifest more money with things like saving or investing or being more conservative, right? With your finances. Um, or maybe you follow some like well-established financial planning strategies. Um, this also could represent like teaching or spiritual guidance. So I don't know if you might attract financial success through things like careers in education or spiritual leadership or by monetizing your knowledge and your wisdom in some way. Um, again, I'm feeling like maybe seeking out some sort of advisor or a mentor or following some sort of proven system can really lead to more financial growth for you. Um, I do think that with the right guidance, it's going to lead you to the financial miracles that you are, you know, longing for. Um, I also feel like your financial miracles are going to be long lasting, right? I don't think that they're just going to be quick and like quick in and out. It's going to be something that is built on a solid foundation and something that's long lasting. Um, we also have the Sacred Union. This one says Beloved Within, Inner and Outer Relationships. So maybe the financial miracles that you're attracting are deeply connected to harmony within yourself and the relationships that you have with other people. I wonder if some of you here might manifest more money through some of your relationships, right? Like maybe one of, like maybe your partner or your family or somebody that you're connected to maybe this person is going to bring in money through their job right so yeah i'm feeling like this is the energy of gaining more money through things like partnerships and collaborations and maybe opportunities that arise from more harmonious balance and like healthy interactions with other people um We also have the bear and cedar. This one says leadership. And um, just the numerology here is the number four. So I think that this has to do with the home. This has to do with stability and structure. So maybe you manifest more money and it directly benefits the stability or um, the stability of your home, or maybe it directly supports your ability to provide for your home but with this card too I feel like you're gonna attract wealth through your strength and your stability and your natural leadership qualities I think that for many of you here you could be stepping into a role where your skills are recognized and rewarded and maybe you manifest a promotion or 
Maybe you tap into some sort of successful investment or some sort of leadership opportunity that really brings you some big substantial financial gains, right? So I do think that with the bear here symbolizing grounding and protection, I feel like you're not only going to bring in abundance, but you're also going to bring in um, long-term stability, like I mentioned earlier, right? I also feel like you have a lot of influence with this card. So whether some of you here are leading a project or guiding others or making some big financial moves, I think that your leadership will draw in prosperity. I also think that the financial blessings that are coming to you are going to be something that is safeguarded, right? Like your wealth and your resources are going to be protected. Um, I also feel like some of you here might be building a safety net too. Um, but yeah, I definitely just feel like you are going to be in this very powerful position to attract these financial miracles through leadership abilities and strong decision making and the stability that you bring to financial matters, right? So this is your time to step into a leadership role or embrace your role as a leader. Um, and you're probably going to see that financial abundance. We also have the Herald. This one says small regrets, longing. So with this one, I don't know for some of you here, maybe you're reflecting and recognizing like past financial decisions, right? Maybe you're revisiting some of your past financial decisions and it's okay to feel a sense of regret or like a longing for any sort of missed opportunity, right? And I think that reflecting on this can be really powerful because it really allows us to learn from our past mistakes and apply those lessons to future financial choices, right? So I do think that you're also manifesting some financial healing, right? Um, maybe some of you here are going to be yearning for a different financial reality, right? So I definitely think that this could be a very powerful catalyst for maybe manifesting financial healing and transformation. And I think that by you acknowledging what hasn't worked in the past, you're more equipped to attract these financial opportunities that really align with your true desires. So super duper exciting pile two. I also feel like these small regrets, they don't have to hold you back, but they can really inspire you to seek out new opportunities that can bring you a big sense of redemption, right? So maybe this comes in the form of a new job or an investment, right? Or some sort of financial plan that really compensates for any sort of previous losses or um, missed opportunities or chances, right? I do think that this is your time to cultivate that financial wisdom. Yeah, we also have beginnings. This one says Aries, Spirit. So this card says, strike iron and flint to make fire. Go for it. The spark of fire is your life force. It, it lives within you. All you must do is claim it. Say yes to a new direction and trust that you have the energy to make a fresh start. So the financial miracles that you're manifesting with beginnings, Aries, Spirit, I feel like they are likely going to be like new ventures, embracing these bold opportunities, and maybe even trailblazing some new paths that really lead you to this newfound sense of abundance, right? Aries is the sign of action. Aries is the sign of leadership. Aries is that sign of, you know, innovation. So I don't know if this is going to involve you starting a new project or a business, right? Like maybe you find yourself inspired to launch a new business or a project or some sort of investment that has the potential for some big financial growth, right? This is the time to trust your intuition, trust your instincts and take those bold steps. I also feel like the energy of Aries could give you increased confidence, right? And initiative to pursue any sort of, you know, financial or money opportunities that you might have hesitated on before, I feel like this newfound confidence is going to bring a lot more lucrative offers and deals to you. Now, I also feel like whether it's a promotion or a new job or a career shift, the spirit of Aries is really encouraging you to take the lead in your professional life, right? I think that this is something that could result in higher earnings or new streams of income. I also feel like some of you here could be manifesting your abundance through creation or innovation in some ways, right? Because Aries is all about pioneering new ways of thinking and doing. So maybe you attract financial success by innovating in your current field, right? Or by introducing some sort of new product or service or concept that really meets a demand in whatever market that you're in. 
Aries also is very symbolic of independence and self-reliance. So maybe you're manifesting a situation where you have more freedom or autonomy or you are in a situation where you can become more self-sufficient and maybe a little bit less reliant on others. So yes, we also have your crystal card here, Aragonite. So the back of this card says what it is, like iron patinade flowers forged by tiny hammers. Aragonite forms in, geomet in geometric bursts called star clusters. It also occurs in the exoskeleton of stony corals and in the shells of most mollusks, protecting the squishy and fishy inside. Who needs this stone? Anyone feeling out of alignment, in need of a major reset, where to put it, meditation cushion adjacent, when to use it, when it's time to retreat to your shell or step out of it if you want to be square with the outside world. First, you've got to get square with your inside world. Call on Aragonite to help set a healthy, sustainable balance. And this one says, find your center. I love that the Hierophant looks like he's uh, meditating here. And it's like, find your center. And I swear we just spoke about meditation. Did we speak about? We, sp we spoke about grounding. So... And then you also have outrageous openness. So this one says, Dear love, open me to your will. Release me from my attachments. Surprise and delight me with your plan. You know what's needed. I am open to receive. Interesting. Something tells me that by you staying open, specifically by you staying open to miracles showing up in your life, this is what's going to bring you these amazing opportunities that you didn't even expect. So stay open, keep an open mind, keep an open heart. You also have a super attractor affirmation. This one says, when I'm in a state of appreciation, I'm in vibrational alignment with my true love nature. I feel like I see this and I just think like lovebirds, right? They look like cardinals. So something tells me too that maybe like your ancestors have something to do with the financial miracles that are coming in. Maybe they are the ones that are watching over you and protecting you and having your back and making sure that this abundance is coming your way. But it, this also reminds me of like union partnerships like we spoke about earlier. So with that, I feel like maybe that abundance again is coming through partnerships or collaborations or joint ventures. Um, and yes, next thing I want to do here is I would love to roll some astro dice and find out more about what financial miracles you're manifesting. So pile two. What financial miracles are you manifesting? You have Mercury in Gemini in the sixth house. So with Mercury in Gemini in the sixth house, I feel like these financial miracles that you're manifesting are likely going to be tied to your communication skills, your ability to stay adaptable, and intellectual curiosity that happens in your daily routines, your daily work. So, um, you know, maybe you get opportunities through communication, right? Through things like writing, speaking, teaching, or anything that really does involve communication. I feel like this is my pile that has a natural ability to articulate their ideas clearly and persuasively. And I think that this is what's going to bring you new clients, new job offers, or better business opportunities. Um, I also feel like with Gemini's influence here, you probably will manifest some sort of financial abundance by embracing some sort of variety in your work, right? Variety of tasks or variety of roles. I just feel like your ability to juggle multiple projects or diversify your income streams, like freelancing or doing side gigs, um, I think that these are the things that are going to lead to your financial growth. Now with Gemini here, I think the energy of networking and connections is gonna be really strong. So engage with your colleagues, attend events, right? Participate in groups because these are the things that are going to lead you towards lucrative opportunities, right? I think that you have this natural curiosity and um, your social skills are something that are going to help you make valuable connections and they're going to help you to enhance your financial prospects. Now, I also feel like you have a very strong sense of problem solving abilities, right? With Mercury and Gemini in the sixth house, it really gives you this very sharp mind for solving problems. So I don't know if you're going to find financial success by streamlining processes, maybe improving efficiency or 
maybe offering solutions in your work environment. And I think that this is something that could lead you to promotions or bonuses. Um, I also feel like another thing here is like learning and education. So maybe like continuous learning or self-improvement are going to be things that are very key to your financial success. So, you know, whether it's taking a course to upgrade your skills or staying informed about trends in your industry, I think that you staying committed to your own personal growth and your learning is going to lead you to better job positions or better entrepreneurial ideas. Um, and for those of you who are interested in both personality, in personal growth and spirituality, I have a podcast called the That's Deep Podcast, um, where I talk about a bunch of different tools that you can use to leverage your skills and to understand yourself at a deeper level so that you can improve your life and your career and your relationships. I talk about personality types, astrology, all sorts of different personal and spirituality, personal growth and spirituality topics. I have interviews with a bunch of different personality types as well, um, and a bunch of different interviews from different signs too. So check that out if you're interested. It is linked for you in the description. But yeah, I also feel like, just last thing with Mercury in Gemini in the sixth house, I feel like you're going to manifest some sort of flexible work environment, right? Remote work, freelance opportunities, right? Jobs that might require travel to bring you financial benefits. Now, I know that some of you are like, hang on, you said I was going to manifest more money through traditional structures or, you know, traditional paths. Well, yes. However, you could be having like a traditional path with a little side hustle, right? Or you could be having, um, you know, the interesting thing is when I say remote work, you could be working remote, but for a well-established company or an institution, right? So those are just a couple of different ways that things could show up. Remember, um, your situation is very unique to you. Only you know what is best for you. But yes, thank you so much, Pile2. Please give this video a like if it resonates. Comment below with what pile you chose. You know I like to connect with you all in the comments. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out my channel, Title Tarot, if you would like to check out more pick a card readings. I have a ton of different topics in a playlist on my channel. So thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye Pile 2. Hi Pile 3, welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. Okay, so Pile 3, you have the Six of Cups. You also have healing the mother line, healing ancestral work, mother line growing up. You have the opossum and peony. This one says bashfulness. You also have the shepherd. This one says celebration, family. You have mercury mindset. You have a crystal card. This one is fluorite. And you also have expansiveness and you have um, a super attractor affirmation card. This one says manifesting is the creative process of aligning with the universe. Oh, manifesting is the creative process of aligning with the energy of the universe to co-create an experience that elevates my spirit and the spirit of the world. With the six of cups here, this can talk about things like nostalgia things like generosity and things like connecting with the past. So when we're thinking about what financial miracles you are manifesting, I feel like you could be manifesting your abundance through old connections, maybe past skills or opportunities that are revisiting you. So I feel like with this card, maybe somebody from your past could offer you a financial opportunity or support. Maybe this looks like a friendship that's been rekindled or a connection with an old colleague that really brings you positive financial developments. I also feel like this is the card that's about tapping into our joy and our innocence. So I don't know if you're going to be manifesting more money through some sort of like creative or passion driven project that brings back feelings of fulfillment and prosperity. Now, there's a theme of like generosity and sharing here. So the Six of Cups is also symbolic of giving and receiving. So I don't know if you'll be gaining more money by being generous with your time or your skills or or your resources. Um, I just think that this is so, like this is a way where you could probably attract some attract some unexpected financial blessings in return. I feel like maybe you're going to be healing some financial patterns too. 
maybe you're going to be resolving some sort of like past financial wound or habit that may have been blocking your abundance before. And I think that by you healing and releasing any of these patterns are going to pave the way for new financial prosperity. So yeah, I just think that the financial miracles that you're manifesting are going to be linked to you revisiting the past or by you embracing some sort of feeling of nostalgia or reconnecting with people or opportunities or experiences that bring abundance back into your life. Now we also have the healing the mother line card. This one says healing, ancestral work, mother line, and growing up. So yeah, I feel like the maternal lineage, right, and ancestral healing are definitely themes here. Um, maybe some of you here are addressing and healing generational patterns, maybe traumas, maybe self-limiting beliefs that have been passed down through your mother line. Um, and I feel like maybe this is a for some of you, maybe this is something that's impacted your relationship with money and abundance and self-worth. So yeah, I definitely think that you probably are going to be manifesting the ability to break free from patterns of scarcity or financial struggle. Um, I think that many of you here are going to be rewriting your financial story and creating a new legacy, right? A new legacy of abundance is what I'm hearing. I think that this is also going to bring you an increased sense of self-worth and confidence. Um, I also feel like you could be manifesting financial opportunities that allow you to nurture yourself and other people. And I think this is what's going to lead you to sustained and very holistic financial growth. So yeah, this is all about you releasing financial blockages, right? Because I think this is the thing that's going to open the door to unexpected financial miracles, right? And new income streams and some sort of advancement in this realm. Um, so yeah, I think overall, this, these miracles that you're manifesting, they're not just monetary, but they're also in the way that they heal and uplift you and your future generations. Now, we also have the opossum and peony. This one says bashfulness. So I think that with bashfulness here, it doesn't imply shyness, right? I think this is speaking about being cautious and observant and maybe going about manifesting wealth in a very thoughtful way. Um, I'm just thinking about the way that opossums play dead to avoid danger. Maybe you're going to plan and strategize in a very subtle way, right? Maybe you're going to be attracting opportunities that require you to show your patience and show your careful consideration before you take action. Now, I also feel like maybe these financial miracles that are coming your way, maybe they're not going to be super loud or obvious, right? Maybe there are subtle opportunities that other people might overlook. And I feel like this is something that is going to require you to be observant and ready to act when the time is right. So I do think that with this, you're attracting financial miracles that are coming through quiet and more strategic actions. Um, we also have the shepherd here. This one says family. Oh, sorry. This one says celebration family. So I do feel like the, the miracles that you're manifesting are deeply connected to your home life or maybe your community or the joy that comes from shared experiences. Um, I think that for some of you here, you might attract financial opportunities that come from or that benefit your family and your close community. Um, I don't know if you're going to be involved in something that is supported by people that you trust, right? Um, I also feel like you have something that you're going to be celebrating soon. Some sort of significant milestone or promotion or some sort of successful project. I also feel like with the shepherd card here, it symbolizes things like protection. So I do feel like you're manifesting um, a very stable and secure uh, like stream of income that's going to allow you to provide for your family and to make sure that you know you ensure their well-being. Um, I also feel like generational wealth is a theme here. So I think that many of you here on this path to creating long-term financial security um, not just for yourself, right? But for future generations as well. Um, so, right, like this could be wise investments or a large savings or 
um, building up a trust or building a family business, right? There's so many different things you can do here. Um, but yeah, we also have Mercury Mindset. This one says, a fox surveys the landscape. Notice the way you assess and interpret a situation. Discover a new, more objective perspective by writing in a journal, talking to a trusted counselor or friend, reading or learning. Most of all, find clarity by listening to your inner wisdom. I think this is a reminder for us to, it's a reminder to set clear intentions, right? With Mercury's influence here, I think that it's really important to write down what you want to achieve, right? Be very precise about the amount and the timeline and the steps to, you know, reach your goals. Um, another thing here is positive affirmations. Maybe this is the pile that will benefit from creating and repeating positive affirmations that really do reflect your financial desires and beliefs, right? And I think that this is something that can help to reprogram your subconscious mind um, to align with your financial goals. Now, Mercury governs communication, right? So maybe this is something that you can use to your advantage, maybe in negotiation or pitches or any sort of talk about finances. I think that by you clearly and confidently communicating will lead you to better deals and better opportunities. Um, again, with Mercury's influence here, I think that it's going to be a time for you to use those analytical skills to plan strategically, right? Network. Networking can open doors to new opportunities and collaborations. Um, and yeah, I just think that by you harnessing Mercury's energy here, you can really refine your mindset and your communication skills. And this is what's going to bring you more financial abundance. We also have the Florite crystal card here. And on the back of it, it says what it is. Florite can range from pale green to deep purple. Often it's both at the same time. It occurs all over the place and it's good to vibe with when you are all over the place. Who needs it? The perpetually distracted, anyone with a vision worth sticking to. Where to put it? Wherever you find yourself constantly tempted to check your phone, i.e. anywhere you have Wi-Fi access. When you want to take an uninterrupted 20 minutes to meditate, an hour to finish a book, or a lifetime to, to concentrate on your unique calling here on Earth. Sharpen your focus. I love fluorite. Also, I just wanted to show you that I have a purple variety of fluorite here. I always go to fluorite when I'm doing my work, when I'm meditating, when even when I'm like doing these readings, I'm holding on to a piece of fluorite, right? I, I want to sharpen my mental acuity. I want to sharpen my focus. Um, and yeah, so if you are interested in getting your hands on any of the crystals that you see here today, um, as well as additional crystals, um, crystal jewelry and non-crystal jewelry, as well as self-care items, I do have a um, online shop, a spiritual self-care shop where, um, yeah, I have a bunch of different things. So check it out. It's in the description if you're interested. Um, we'll just leave this piece of floor right here. But we also have expansiveness. Eternity is far more creative than the rigid, constrained, and exhausted ego. Wow. So I think that, I don't know, I just feel like you're going to expand in ways that you couldn't have even imagined. You're going through some sort of metamorphosis, pile three. Allow yourself to bloom. Allow yourself to expand and grow farther, bigger, wider than you could have ever expected. With this too, I think like huge financial miracles are coming in big time. One, one that's going to change things for you and change the trajectory and really, really be something that supports your family. Okay. So we also have manifesting is the creative process of aligning with the energy of the universe to co-create an experience that elevates my spirit and the spirit of the world. I love this. So this talks about doing your part, right? In manifesting, aligning your energy so that you can co-create and really design the life that you want to live and experience, right? So I'm curious, pile three, what is it that you want to manifest for yourself? What is it that you want to manifest for your loved ones, your children, your future children, if that's something that resonates with you? I just think about that because the six of cups can also talk about children, 
and that kind of thing too. So yes, the next thing I want to do here is I would love to roll some astro dice to get more information on what financial miracles pile three is manifesting. So you have the sun in Scorpio in the seventh house. So with the sun in Scorpio in the seventh house here, I feel like you're going to be manifesting financial miracles through deep transformation in your partnerships or in your alliances or in your shared resources. So with Scorpio here, I feel like it's going to allow you to dive deep into any sort of collaborations, joint ventures, um, maybe in uncovering hidden opportunities or um, in navigating any sort of like collaboration, discerning if this opportunity is right for you. Um, but I do think that your financial growth is, again, going to be very tied to your relationships, right? Both personal and professional. So I don't know if you find that you're drawn to powerful partners, right? Or collaborations that really can help you grow, right? Can really help you to expand. Um, I think that there's also a potential for breakthroughs in financial agreements or maybe investments or um, in, in inheritance, I just feel like you have this ability to negotiate and transform. <coughs> so this is your reminder to trust your intuition, be strategic, and embrace change. A lot of beautiful things are coming your way, Pile 3. So thank you so much. Please give this video a like if it resonates. Comment below with what pile you chose. I love to connect with you all in the comments. Take care of yourself. Check out my channel, Title Tarot. I have a playlist full of pick-a-card readings from a bunch of different topics. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye, Pile 3. Hi, Pile 4. Welcome to your reading. Now let's dive in. So you have the Three of Wands. You also have the Bud. This one says, Potential, Promise, It's About to Happen, Keep Going. We also have the Bobcat and Blackthorn, Patience. Also have the twins. This one says self-protection, dual natures. You also have Saturn. This one says limitation. You have a crystal card. This one is black tourmaline. And then you have right action. And you have, I slow down and listen to the guidance that's available to me. With the three of wands here, pile four, I feel like you are going to be manifesting financial growth and expansion. So I feel like this is my pile that's already set plans in motion and you are about to see your efforts pay off. So this could talk about um, things that you've invested in may start to bring you returns, right? So it's this card of having foresight and confidence and this very strategic vision. Um, so I do think that you're on the brink of some sort of big financial improvement. So in terms of the financial miracles that you're manifesting with the Three of Wands, again, I think this is growth and expansion, right? You're attracting financial opportunities that go beyond your current horizons. So I do think that you can expect rewards from past efforts or past investments. Um, this can talk about long-term success, right? You are building something that is going to be stable and something that has your future growth in mind. So having patience and having the steady progress are going to bring you lasting abundance. And I love that we have the card of patience here too. Um, for some of you here, maybe you're gonna have an opportunities overseas or somewhere in a new market, because the Three of Wands can talk about ventures that are beyond your immediate environment, right? Like international business or travel or online opportunities. Um, I just think that in terms of the financial miracles that you're manifesting are going to be um, very much rooted in you having this foresight and you um, planning wisely and having this having this willingness to explore new places, new territories, um, new industries. I just think that this is my pile that's entering this phase where your previous work is starting to bear fruit. So this is something that's going to bring you a lot of financial prosperity and expansion. Now we also have the bud. This one says potential promise. It's about to happen. Keep going. I love this. This is literally what we've been talking about. So um, 
I really do think that there's a lot of promise here, there's a lot of potential, and I feel like there's this like imminent realization of your goals that's about to happen, so super super exciting. I think just like a flower bud or a rose bud, um, you are on the verge of blossoming with your finances, so maybe this is a great time to invest in yourself, in your skills, right? Nurture those ideas, nurture those projects. I think that this is a good time for you to further your education, maybe even network or hone your craft in some way. Um, this is also a really good time for you to set clear goals, right? Really go ahead and define and write down what exactly you want to achieve. Do you want $3,000 a month? Do you want $5,000 a month? Do you want $8,000 a month? How much do you need to survive, right? And, and this is a sign to not just guess at it, to actually like look at all those bills, tally them all up, and then add extra in there for some cushion, and then that's how much money you need every month, right? And you're gonna decide that that's something that comes to you with ease, that you are worthy of, something that's already on its way to you, right? And easier said than done, but this is just kind of the theme with this card. Um, I also feel like this is, um, This is your call to trust the timing of things, right? I feel like this is my pile that has been working very diligently and they know that growth takes time. So this is your sign to be patient. Trust that all of your efforts are really setting the stage for this big breakthrough. You also have the bobcat and the blackthorn. This one says patience. So, hmm, I think again, you're setting yourself up for long-term growth right? Something that's gradual and sustainable in terms of financial growth. This is not about you getting quick wins, right? This is about you focusing on building this long lasting wealth, wealth over time, and something that's very um, carefully planned out and thought out and you having this persistence, right? I also think the element of like strategic investments are here, right? Making thoughtful and very deliberate investments, maybe waiting for the right opportunities, maybe avoiding impulsive decisions. All of these things are going to position you for bigger returns. I also think that this is my pile that is building foundations, right? You are working on laying down strong financial foundations, right? Maybe you're creating a very solid budget or saving very diligently or investing in your education and your skills in some way. Um, with this card, I also feel like it's important to, again, trust in timing right? Trust in the timing of your journey, knowing that some opportunities and some things take time to manifest and materialize, right? And having this patience is a very key component of your success. So we also have the twins. This one says self-protection, dual natures. So with this one, I feel like it could mean balancing different sources of your income, right? Maybe finding a way to align your personal and professional aspirations, with self-protection here, I feel like maybe you're going to be focusing on safeguarding your finances, right? Again, having this budget, building an emergency fund, or um, doing something to protect yourself from any sort of future uncertainty, right? I also feel like the element of partnerships could be something here. So maybe you are going to leverage partnerships or collaborations. Um, maybe you consider working with financial advisors or mentors or business partners who can offer you maybe different perspectives and people that can actually help you achieve your financial goals. Now we also have Saturn, this one says limitation, pruning the roots. Go to the root of a matter and find out what needs to be cut back. Limitation now can create expansion later. Connect with the part of yourself that is self-sufficient, practical, and experienced. I like this. I like that um, I wouldn't say that like you're limiting yourself now, but you're creating a very solid, structured, clear plan so that so that the abundance that you attract and the miracles that you attract come in consistently, right? Long-term success, not get rich quick schemes, right? So um, I also feel like you are um, you're releasing limitation. That could be a financial miracle that's coming your way releasing limitation in your finances in the money department right having more than enough we also have black tourmaline this is a very protective crystal 
On the back it says what it is. Grounding black tourmaline is a slightly magnetized semi-precious gemstone with a reputation for protecting a delicate psyche from a case of the crazies and establishing powerful energetic boundaries between you and all the zombies out there. Who needs it? Everyone. Where to put it? Beside your doors to keep emotional vampires out on your person, your pocket, everywhere. When to use it? Anytime you take public transportation, find yourself in a crowd, or hear that sucking sound of a coworker or a family member taking more of you than they are giving back. This one says protect your light. Interesting. So I do feel like we, again, have that element of protection, right? Protection, protection. Um, so I think that the financial miracle that you're manifesting is protected finances, protected resources, right? Protecting that bag. Yes. Um, we have right action here. So straight up, I just think that many of you here are on the right path, right? Um, potential promise. It's about to happen. Keep going, right? You are taking the right steps. You are taking the right action. So if any of you out there needed some sort of confirmation that you're on the right path or you're taking the right steps, here it is. Yeah. Um, we also have the super attractor affirmation card. This one says, I slow down and listen to the guidance that's available to me. Interesting. So again, I think this is that element of like slow and steady wins the race, right? Going slow, being able to listen to the guidance that's constantly coming in, right? The, the suit of wands can talk about um, our spirit, uh, spirituality, passion, um, spiritual guidance. So I think that on your journey, um, it is time to, you know, pause every once in a while to be able to hear the inner guidance that's coming from within you as well. So the next thing I want to do here is I would love to roll some astro dice to get more information on what financial miracles pile four is manifesting. We have, oops, we had Neptune. I'm just going to find Neptune. Where you at? Where you at? That's not Neptune. So you have Pluto and Cancer. Pluto and Cancer in the ninth house. So I feel like with um, Pluto and Cancer in the ninth house, um, this, this talks about deep transformation, things like emotional empowerment and having this expansive approach to wealth creation. So I feel like Pluto in the ninth house will talk about you having this very powerful ability to transform your beliefs and your philosophies, particularly around wealth and abundance, right? So maybe this is the pile that attracts more financial opportunities by deeply exploring this new knowledge or education or any sort of spiritual practices that reshape, reshape your mindset about money. With Pluto and Cancer here, I feel like there's this element of emotional depth. So maybe you're going to manifest wealth through nurturing environments, family connections, right? Businesses that resonate with you on an emotional level. Um, I don't know if your financial miracles could come from things that you feel a very strong emotional connection to, like real estate, family business, right? Healing professions. Um, the ninth house is also about expansion, right? Expansion. Um, it's about travel, international ventures, international ventures, higher education, things like publishing, things like teaching. So maybe your financial miracles are tied to a more broad and global influence. I think that you're going to be impacting others far beyond your current environment. Um, and I also feel like with Pluto and Cancer here, this could talk about maybe creating some sort of lasting financial legacy, right? So maybe this involves transforming family wealth or inheritance or really building something that has this very deep and lasting impact on future generations. So thank you so much pile four i hope that this resonates please give this video a like if it does comment below with what pile you chose i love to talk with you all in the comments take care of yourself check out my channel title tarot i have a playlist with a ton of pick a card readings for you to explore and i will see you on the next video bye pile four